This screencast, section 13, phase 2, multiple covalent bonds. So we have talked about hybridization and the bonding involved that gives us tetrahedral geometries, trigonal pyramidal geometries, things like that. And now we need to talk about the actual bonding that's taking place in double bonds and triple bonds. We mentioned earlier that single bonds are representing when we first introduced bonding, we were talking about how a single bond was a physical overlap of one orbital of this atom and one orbital of this atom. Turns out that's the truth for single bonds, but not for double bonds. It's only partly true. So let's consider for a moment this compound. This is ethene. Yeah, ethene. And we have three groups of electrons around each carbon. And so we know the hybridization is sp 3 hybrid and we know that those are trigonal planar in geometry and if it's an sp3 hybridized orbital that means that there's one unhybridized p orbital and here is the three-dimensional sort of picture if you will of what's going on here so we have our two carbons centered here and then we have the hybrid orbitals we have one hybrid orbital from this carbon overlapping with this hydrogen right there. One over hybrid orbital overlapping with this hydrogen here. Another one there, another one there. So those are all our single bonds, okay? And now this carbon, the two carbons are sharing a total of four electrons. There's a hybrid orbital here, of one carbon, a hybrid orbital here of one carbon, and those physically overlap. And that makes our garden variety sigma bond or our single bond. Okay, so anytime you have physical overlap of orbitals, we call that a sigma bond. All single bonds, S-I-N-G-L-E, -E, single bonds are sigma bonds. They're physical overlap of orbitals. But now we have the issue of what about the other pair of electrons? Well, the other electron, so this carbon right now has four valence electrons, as shown so far. There's one in this orbital, sharing with the, this orbital over here. There's one electron in this orbital, one electron in this orbital. That means there's one other electron that's running back and forth between these two lobes of the unhybridized p orbital. Now, if it was sigma bonding, what would happen is these p orbitals would sort of bend over and physically overlap. But if you think about it, if they bend over, then they're, they're, well, the orientation of things is going to get weird and wonky. So the other bond is actually not a physical overlap. What happens is that the unhybridized p orbitals sort of build a highway. That's the best way of thinking about it. Instead of physically overlapping, the electrons sort of run back and forth between both p orbitals and both atoms. It's almost like when we think about uh, resonance structures and that electrons are going back and forth between two different structures. Think of this as electrons going back and forth between these two atomic p orbitals. Um, I like to think of it how it is when this bond occurs, we're sort of bridging this highway between the two of them. So here's our sigma bond. And then we have our two lobes of what is known as a pi bond, right? So up here's our pi bond. We have two lobes of a pi bond. So here's sort of another way of looking at it. Here is just sort of a blow up. There's the sigma bond, the overlapping hybrid orbitals, and then the unhybridized p orbitals go back and forth and back and forth, and inside that p orbital, they could be up here or down there or both, whatever. So we have two bonds. We have the sigma bond here, and then we have the pi bond sort of above and below. Now, because they're above and below and the highway is sort of going across, it makes it such that a double bond can't spin. Single bonds, because of their physical overlap, can spin on their axes, but double bonds can't because of this unhybridized p orbital. This is the reason why double bonds and triple bonds can't spin is because these p orbitals are not physically overlapping. They're, we sort of built a highway between them. So we can go back and forth very, very quickly, but we can't keep changing the road. That's one way of thinking about it. And then a triple bond is just an extension. So here we have ethine, or sometimes known as acetylene. It's got a triple bond. And each carbon is sp hybridized. 
And so two orbitals that are 180 degrees to each other, and here are the hybrid orbitals. So here's the one, one of the hybrid orbitals on carbon, one of the hybrid orbitals on carbon. The outer one physically overlaps with a hydrogen forming a sigma bond here. So there's a single bond, and that's a sigma overlap. Single bond over here, sigma overlap. And in the triple bond, we have the two hybrid orbitals overlapping, forming our one sigma bond. So there's one actual sigma bond. And then we have the unhybridized p orbitals. So you can, there's the carbon, there's the carbon. And I, we separated the picture so it's easier to see. And so there's a p orbital above and below on this one, above and below on this one, and then coming out and going back. So above and below, above and below, going in, coming back, going in, coming back. And so these orbitals and this orbitals overlap and form a pi bond. And then this orbital overlaps with this orbital, making another pi bond. And so we actually have two pi bonds, and they are 90 degrees to each other. And here's sort of another picture. So the purple represents the sigma bonds, and then the yellow represents the two pi bonds that are 90 degrees to each other. And just like in a double bond, it can't spin. A triple bond can't spin either. So every time you see a triple bond, it's composed of one sigma and two pi. And every time you see a double bond, it's one sigma and one pi. So all bonds have at least, have only one sigma bond, one and only. All bonds have one and only one sigma bond.